In this week's episode, I'm going to take a look at what I think is one of the most important features in terms of security and compliance in Microsoft 365. It's data loss prevention policies. How do they work? What can they do for you? And how do we get started? Well, you've come to the right place. Greetings my fellow YouTubers, welcome back to the channel, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I really do appreciate you uh, dropping by. On this episode, I thought we'd take a look at data loss prevention policies, or as I like to call them, data leakage prevention actually. And this prevents data from leaking outside of your organization. Now, it's a really interesting episode, um, so please stick with me. I guarantee you're gonna learn something of value here. Now, of course, we love subscribers, and if you've not subscribed, go ahead, click on that subscribe button up there, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And if you like the video, please hit that like button. Give me a big thumbs up uh, as we love those as well. Now, if you've got comments, questions about this or any of my other videos, then just get them down below and I'll do my very best to answer them as usual. All right, so I think without any more jibber jabber, I think it's about time we started to learn something. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna kick off my demo here in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going into the Compliance Center. All right, so in here, let's wait for this for a moment. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down a little bit more and I'm gonna come into this area here. This is Data Loss Prevention. So in here, first of all, what we've got is we have got um, an overview. It's almost like a helicopter view, if you will, uh, regarding um, data loss prevention within our organization. So at the moment, it's monitoring 49 activities, 42 of which are in OneDrive, and the other seven, of course, are in SharePoint. Um, so if I scroll up here, we've got uh, a number of sheet tabs. You've got policies and um, out of the box, you can see here, I've got a number of default policies. Um, if a policy hits, it will generate an alert. You've also got um, endpoint DLP settings. So if you're managing devices through Endpoint Manager, or indeed you've deployed Defender for Endpoint, these are a number of endpoint options that you can deploy. Um, also, we have something called Activity Explorer, and this just gives you an overview of all the activities, like a log file. So I'm going to kick off here in the policies, and we're going to create a, a new policy. Now, when you create a policy, you have got the choice of a number of different templates. So we can go from financial, medical and health, privacy, and you can also create your own ones as well. Uh, I'd just like to point out, by the way, that if you create any of these other policies, you can also customize them as well. And we also have some enhanced policies. And you can see that uh, we have a number of these here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this nice and simple. I'm gonna come over to financial and I'm gonna scroll down and I live in the UK, so I'm gonna choose some UK financial data. And you can see that this is monitoring for the use of credit cards and also debit card numbers, as well as a SWIFT code, all right? So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and you can see it's calling it UK financial data. You can change that if you want to. So when I click on next, it now says, okay, choose the locations in which you want to apply the policy. Now, by default, it's gonna select everything here. Um, and you can see that everything's included, but you can also exclude certain emails and various things as well. Now, uh, the alternative to that is that you go in and choose specific groups or specific websites, accounts, and things like that. Now, as you scroll down, we can see you can include te uh, Teams, Exchange, SharePoint, 
Um, you can also add in devices as well. So if you're managing devices, then you can also manage the content on those devices as well as some other uh, features as well. If you're in a hybrid scenario, for example, hybrid SharePoint or hybrid exchange, you can also add in on-premises repositories as well. Um, at the moment, I'm not, I've not got that at the moment, so I'm going to uh, deselect that. Okay, going to click next and you can see what it's uh, monitoring. It's monitoring at the moment for potential credit card numbers, debit cards and SWIFT codes. Can I customize this? Absolutely you can. So if I click on this and then go to next, this then gives me the editor. Now I can add in additional rules and I can also just expand this and I can see exactly what's included. Now, if you want to edit this or move these policies, you can see that you've got up and down arrows, so you can change the movement here, uh, or the location rather, of these. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click into the pencil here, and this will take me into the edit mode. So you can see what, what this is looking for, it's looking for credit card information, debit card information and swift code and as i said you can also add in other sensitive types as well so if there is a, you know other sensitive things that you want to bring in so if i scroll down let's just come uh, into let's say the uk of course the, the thing about credit card numbers is they're pretty universal as well um, so I might want to add in things like the electoral roll, the UK national insurance number. So, you know, as I said at the beginning of the demo, you can create your own custom um, rules, but you can also customize the rules that are there as well. And you can see that's exactly what I've just done. Um, you can also um, specify the confidence level. Um, so that means the AI will look at the, the number format and it will determine, okay, I've got a pretty high confidence level that that looks like a credit card. And also, what's the minimum, ma uh, the minimum instance count? So are you prepared to let one instance of a credit card number slip through, or do you want to increase that? Okay. Now, in addition, you can then add, okay, so that's what we're looking for. The condition is we're looking for those various rules. Now, you can also add conditions as well if you want to. Um, so, you know, other things you, you might want to do that. Um, but I'm happy with that at the moment. Okay. Now, do you want to do any exemptions? So, uh, again, are there any exemptions? Um, again, depending on which policy you choose, these will be editable. All right. Then we can say, okay, do you want to, based on those, do you want me to, how do you want me to action those? So do you want me to restrict the access or encrypt the content in 365? Do you want me to audit or the restrict the activities on certain devices? Or do you want to restrict the use of third party apps? So that means that you wouldn't be able to open a website in anything other than SharePoint or open a document in let's say open office. Okay, so if I choose to restrict or encrypt content in these locations, I can then uh, either block everyone or I can block people outside of your organization, which you think about it is, you know, that's probably something that you might want to do. You can also add in other options as well. So again, you know, everything is customizable here. Um, notifications. So how do you want to notify your users that a policy has happened? So on Endpoint, uh, you can show a policy tip. So a policy tip uh, is, uh, again, either on, an, on a device or in Microsoft 365. So for example, here in Microsoft Teams, you'll get like a little notification um, uh, at the, at the right-hand side that a policy has taken a hit. If it's Microsoft Word, it'll be a little banner along the top and so on. So um, you can then notify the user who sent the content 
or notified these people. So not just the owner, but also these people as well. Um, so you can do an email notification. We can also do that policy tip and you can, you can customize this. So I could say, for example, warning, and I could say policy uh, violation. All right, so you could say a policy violation and you could say, uh, please, you know, please call uh, our support line on 5555, for example. Um, then we've got Microsoft 365 services, notify users with a policy tip. You can also send them an email as well, as I've mentioned, and you can customize the email and the subject of the email and things like that. Um, now you can see that we've got policy tips both on devices. So if you're managing devices, you can do it like that. And you can also manage policy tips uh, here as well. So again, um, these are policy tips in the actual applications. So I could say policy violation here. And what this does, again, just a little tip, a friendly tip saying, you know, um, you, you might want to think about that. That looks like a credit card number. Are you really sure you want to send that out? Now, um, are you going to allow overrides? Now, what this means is that like, I'm a salesperson. I'm, sign I'm creating an email and I put in a, um, a credit card number for a customer. Um, and it comes up and it says, Oh, hey, hang on a minute. That's a that's a policy violation. Um, now, in some situations, you might want the salesperson to be able to override that policy tip. And in this case, you could say, yeah, OK, I'm going to allow overrides. However, you need to put in a business justification that and that's then audited. OK, you can also audit override the rule automatically if it's been reported as a false positive previously. So I'm going to leave that one in there, okay? Now, if an incident takes place, do you want to um, specify that an incident, so for example, it's a credit card, yeah, okay, this is quite important. Do you want to send an alert? So the alert will come to my admin, and this is just a demo account, of course, um, or do you want to send it every time or do you want to limit the number of alerts that you can get? Because obviously you don't want to fill up a, a, a mailbox. All right. And then you've got various additional options for managing the priority and so on of that alert. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is you can see you can edit the not only what's included in the rule, but also how the rule is dealt with as well. So now that we've edited that rule, do you want, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go in and do you want me to test it first, which is a good idea? Um, or do you want to turn it on right away or do you want to keep it off? All right. So you might want to test it just to make sure that everything's working and so on. Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go and say, yep, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to switch that policy on. It'll ask me to review the policy. I'm happy. And I'm now going to submit that policy. All right. And that policy has now been updated. OK, it's very cool. Now, if I just click OK here, we can see the policy is running when it was last modified. If there has been any alerts that have been generated and again, any activity in terms of data loss prevention um, endpoint settings. Now, if you are using endpoint settings, there are some additional features that you can do here. For example, do you want to restrict certain apps or groups of users on the devices? Do you want to specify that certain Bluetooth apps are not allowed? Again, they could potentially cause issues. Any file path exclusions, for example, on a Windows device or anything like that. Um, we also have something called Activity Explorer. And as I said earlier, any activity would be listed here. And this is a log file, essentially. So you can go back and forth uh, to have a look at that log. Now, you might be thinking, Andy, when you created that policy, 
there was quite a number of different options here. Um, can I add to these? Can I customize this in any way? And you know what? That's a great question. And the answer is yes, you can. So for that, we simply come up to data classifications here. And this is kind of a helicopter view of information protection. And it doesn't just cover sensitive information, but it also covers things like sensitivity labels, data loss retention policies, and things like that. So you can see here, sensitive information types. I've got a complete list of everything, but I can also go in here and I can create my own as well. Um, other things, here's that same Activity Explorer tab, but this is really useful as well. This is the Content Explorer. And what this does, it does a complete scan of my all the data in my organization. And you can see here that it's detected, you know, 74 physical addresses, um, how many credit card numbers, 62, 50. So it tells you how much sensitive information is within your organization. And more than that, it tells me where it actually is. And I can then say, yeah, I want to go ahead and download this. So if I then open this file up, um, what this will then do, just wait for, it, wait for it to come up. Actually, no, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to open this with, I am just gonna open this with Excel because numbers really doesn't give you everything. So I'm gonna open this up with Microsoft Excel. All right, so let's have a look, see what we can see. Okay, so yeah, you can see that it tells you, you know, you've got 40, this was credit card, so it tells you how many occurrences. Now you can actually customize this and you can configure it as well. So you, do you want, you know, how much information do you want to give? Um, so everything is completely customizable and you can customize it in the, in the settings, the data loss prevention settings. Um, so, like I said, you've, that's the same tab. You've got the Activity Explorer tab, but this is really useful because it just tells you how much sensitive information is in there. So, there you have it. Data loss prevention policies as part of Microsoft 365 compliance. Definitely have a play around with them. Definitely learn them. They can really make a difference to your business. And also, if you're learning uh, the technology for the exams, uh, they do cover that in a number of the Microsoft exams. So that's it for this week. I really hope that you've enjoyed that session. If you did, a big thumbs up would be great. Hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll be notified of any new videos. And as always, comments, questions, get them down below, uh, and I'll definitely feed back to you. All right, thank you so much, and the very best of luck with it, and I'll see you next time. Take care, cheers. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.